Okay, let's have a look see at the Kanzawa Drill Guide. This is one really cool little unit that I like. But before I get into a detailed view of it, let's maybe do a little bit of a preamble as to how it is that I came upon this unit in particular. Let's bring up the Google Tron and, and let's search up Drill Guide. They really need to make a card interface for Google. Uh, it really makes things so much easier. I like Google Image Search because you can get all the different varieties and you know, I, I won't bore you with this. I, I actually got a whole bunch of tabs up here. Let's go through some of the different guides that I have managed to find and I've kind of ordered them from the, the, the most craptacular up to the best which, in my opinion, is the Kanzawa Drill Guide. First up, we have a lot of these plastic, fantastic, craptacular, like, what the heck is... This is Amazon, Canadian Amazon for you Americans. What the fuck is up with that? How the hell do they come up with their prices? Anyways, plastic, fantastic, orange, polypropylene, whatever. I wouldn't pay $15 for that. It'd piece of shit. Next up, we got this Kings County Tool Portable. I see a number of these. There are some Chinese OEM, eh, whatever. You can tell that they're plastic. See if there there is a zoom in there. You can see just by the the the, the uh, texture that this is plastic. You got a, a steel bushing there. At least you got a actual nice metal uh, drill chuck some reasonably stout guides, but a plastic fantastic base, crank it down, garbage, piece of shit. These things, you're gonna be questioning yourself all the time, am I square, am I square? Or, or, or did it get out of whack on me? I, yeah, I, I wouldn't touch that. Price is good though. Uh, next up, we got the General Tools. General's a pretty big name. Tools and Instruments 3637. This is a bit of a weird one because it really does look like it is aluminum castings. And it looks reasonably sturdy. Varied in the reviews, though. Some people say that it's it's all plastic, and some people say it's not all plastic. So I'm not quite sure what the evolution of that tool is, but I I, I would not order it, especially for that price. Seventy Canadian tiny dollars. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Next up, we got here is the Miles Crap, the Miles Crap three thirteen eighteen. And again, really varied in the reviews, a little bit higher, but a lot of plastic. The knobs are plastic. The base might be the only metal thing here. And this base is very thinly cast, like total value engineering. You got the little spring of a thing there. Eh, whatever. Take a zoom in on it. You got the. It looks like there's some flats on the shank. That's okay. And you got a metal chuck. This, if it was aluminium, that would be cool. But I'm not. I'm not sure about that. Eh, I, I don't know if I. I. I trust that. You can see here the uh, the angle of the dangle adjustment and yeah. The tool definitely doesn't look very fantastic. Uh, next up, and this here is the friggin' Cadillac of the drill guide industry. This here is the UJK drill guide with 10 millimeter, 3 8 Chuck, look at the price on that thing. If it was only the price, that would be one matter. But this is friggin' vaporware. They've been they they've had this on their website since 2016, and I've had it bookmarked since then. And like it just hasn't hasn't actually materialized. I think it might have materialized at some point last year, and they they, they sold out of what they made. But I, I'm not I'm not sure because yeah, whatever. Anyways, it's anodized aluminium, and you check out you got these two nice little stop collars there with brass thumb nuts. Big knob for adjusting the angle. Nice aluminum base plate. It looks pretty darn good. 
very good even, but at 210 bucks, and, and this is from the United Kingdom, you're going to be paying extra money for your import duties and your shipping. It looks like a quarter uh, hex shank uh, shaft here on a drill quill. Seems like a decent chuck. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know if you can get it. Uh, uh, looks like a pretty good option, I, I guess. Uh, I did find, though, this must be Chineseium because checkrockler.com has created one as well, and that must be American doll hairs at 150 of them. And it is the same thing, basically the same thing. The only thing I could see that is different is that this Rockler one has only a single collar for limiting the depth of drilling, where the Askminster has two of them. Yeah. Anyway, 150 bucks if you if you're into that, like that seems like a pretty good option, not bad. But Let's now get back to the Kanzawa, which is, in my opinion, better than them all. I like the Kanzawa. The Kanzawa is the one I got is the K801 model, which is no longer available-ish. But it does appear that Amazon, Americano, and eBay, and a few other places might be still holding some of these in stock. They, they've upgraded it to the 802. This model here, the Kanzawa 801, it has a circular base. And it has a silver kind of painted color and a 3 8 chalk. And let's take a look at the 802 that replaces it. And the 802, they changed the friggin' color and they put plastic knobs on it. That, insofar as what I can tell, is the main difference. Yeah, an additional difference is that these knobs face to the outside as opposed to facing straight forward. <coughs> I'm choked up as to which one of these is better. The plastic knobs, you're going to get better torque. These little guys, you got these thumb screws, which are, well, your torque is somewhat limited on these. But these ones, the screws are facing outwards and are going to get caught on things in your tool bag or whatever. These with their more forward pointing set screws may be a little bit more convenient for carrying these units. Anyways, that's a quick introduction to drill guides that I found on the internet. Just before I get into the actual Kanzawa that I got, I'll show you their website they have a couple of different varieties. They got the 802, I got the 801, and the 802 versus this one is a little bit longer of a column, of a guide columns. Half inch chuck, three eighths inch chuck. Not sure whether that matters to you, but that's something to consider, a bit biglier. This one is the same size as the 802. This is 802-3 that has a quarter inch chuck. This one might be the one that you're interested in. However, if you like drilling cockeyed into your material, you got the angle of adjustment. Yeah, it's a lot heavier. It's twice as heavy, two kilograms versus one kilogram. One kilogram, this thing's heavy. It has some, it has some mass to it. This one's two kilograms. Well, you can decide for yourself whether that angle is really, really necessary or not. I'll argue in a moment that it's not and that these perpendicular ones are just fine. Okay, let's have a look-see at this drill guide. The first thing that is abundantly clear is that it is solid. This is all metal in construction. You have an aluminum carriage, an aluminum base, very thick rods for the guide. These here I measure to be 30 millimeters in diameter. That's not a half of a half of a thumb knuckle for you Americans. That's, that's 13 millimeters. That's that's bigger than that. The uh, chuck, the metal chuck, and it's not marked as to who makes it. All it says is. All it says is one to ten millimeters, three eighths, twenty-four. So it's a thread-on chuck. 
The quill has three flats on it, and three flats is a very good idea. You think about it, drills, and all, they have three contact points on it. That, that makes sense. The aluminum castings are done to a really nice quality level. Just check out the label. It's embossed directly into the into the mold that made this metal. And if this is not enough, very nice little Kanzawa label. It has a aluminum. It's actually a, a embossed aluminum uh, sticker that's applied. That's pretty cool. The base. It has four screw holes so you can make a shoe for it or you can mount it onto some sort of other jig or fixture of some variety. And of course it has the uh, the little angle uh, thing, the little little V V uh, V block type things for putting round stock or something like that on. The, the chuck comes with a chain that you hang on. It seems really pretty stupid to me, so I got rid of it right away. Just, uh, hold, hold, hold the chuck and uh, hold, hold the uh, chuck key in the chuck itself. Uh, way simpler. Uh, the collars are steel, and the thumb screws on this earlier version seem to be some sort of a softer type of steel. These guide rods, I, I imagine that they're hardened and they be hardened so that they can resist any sort of... Uh, let's just try that out. And... Yeah, there's no... no, no th th these screws are not touching the bar, so that's, that's pretty cool. I wonder how hard they are, though. Let's try it out with the file. And do it on the bottom so I don't want to scratch up the, the actual guide portion. Ooh. Yeah, it, it's it's hardened. It's definitely harder than these than these thumb screws, but it's it's not hard to to tool steel or files. If you're carrying this in your toolbox, you might want to be a little bit cognizant of that because you definitely don't want to scratch up these guide bars because it has a really nice smooth action. I pop that off and. Pop these off. This casting is really, really thick. And it has this really nice, almost flush, thermoplastic rubber type uh, inserter. Yeah, it's, it's quite thick. Let me check it out with our ruler. And it's roughly, roughly two millimeters thick. Nice non-slip base. Let's check out the the chuck and the carriage. First of all, we can see that it has bronze bushings, and it spins fairly, fairly smoothly. Let's uh pop this chuck off and. Yeah, generic Chineseium. Yeah. Ew. Ew, check that out. Uh, that's not very confidence inspiring. The quill is held in with a uh, Jesus clip. Let's pop this off and see what sort of bearing is uh, or bushing is used. Looks like two bushings. You got two identical bushings on the top and on the bottom. And got a bit of schmoo on it. And you look at the quill. It has a very generous film of oil. So this you will want to fairly regularly lubricate. Imagine a drop of oil on the top every now and then would would be welcome. Now one thing I like about this guide is that it is square, it's perpendicular. There's no knob here for adjusting the angle, so there's no concern about this ever going out of whack on you. And if you do need to drill something at an angle, well, you can still do it. You just loosen those up and 
allow these drill these guide rods to slide down, lock them into position, and now you got your angle. That it comes with two stop collars is a great idea. Two reasons. First of all, it gives you a little bit of extra assurance that you're going to not be pushing them down if you're really bearing down on this. That's one thing. Another thing that having an extra stop collar works really good for is you can put the carriage on and lock it into position so it's not sliding around on you when you're carrying it around in your tool bag. All right, let's put through some bases. Another thing I like about it, it doesn't have any sort of stop at the end of the guide rods and that is really nice because you can put in your bit much, much easier. Okay, let's drill a two centimeter deep hole in some hard, hard maple. The bit's a Forestner and it is one and three eighths and just to to test this, put it through its paces. I, I, I'm not going to clamp it down and said I'm just going to do it freehand and I'm going to see whether it actually gets a nice, neat 90 degree hole. Not bad, considering it was wobbling around a little bit. That's straight. And the depth is... seems right. Oh. So to conclude, it's a pretty nice drill guide. It's not a drill press, really. It, it doesn't replace a drill press because it doesn't get the feed pressure. You don't, you can't really, you're limited to how much pressure you can jam down on the drill with your arm. Drill press, you get the mechanical advantage, you get the, the lever action happening. Nonetheless, for holes in large stock, this is fine. And uh, construction, other than the chuck, the Chinesium chuck, the construction is first rate. Anyways, Thanks for watching. Room for more tools. Bye-bye.